Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, minimum string length after removing substrings. So the idea is we're given a string, something that could look like this, and we are allowed to remove all occurrences, all substrings of A, B, we're allowed to remove this, or we're allowed to remove all occurrences of C, D, so this substring as well. I shouldn't have said or, we're allowed to remove both of them, so we can remove this and we can remove this one. Now, as we remove these substrings, we will be left with a new string, so the new string will just be these characters. As you kind of notice, where we did the removal, we now have a new string, a new substring, A, B, which we can now remove again. So our goal here is to make this as small as it could possibly be. So this is the input string that we're given. We remove this, we remove this, and then we remove the A, B that's formed. That's about as small as we can get it. It looks like we're left with A, F, C or sorry, I don't know where I got that A from, <laughs> but we're just left with FC. So what we would return in this case is not the string itself, but we would actually return the length of the string, which in this case is two. So I'll briefly discuss three solutions. One of the solutions will actually code up, but first I'm gonna go through kind of like the brute force solution, which that was actually what tempted me at first. I thought the best we could do is a brute force, but there is an optimization and I'll just kind of spoil it for you and tell you which data structure we're gonna use. It's the stack. And then third is how we could potentially do it in place if strings weren't immutable, at least in most languages they are. Maybe I think in C or something you can get away with it. But this is what I'll kind of go over. So let's start with the brute force. The obvious idea here is that we just kind of search for the substring. So we kind of run a loop while either the string AB or CD exists in the input, we can remove it with a empty string, I guess. We can replace it with that. The reason we would do it this way is because then we can use the built-in functions, or we could also code it ourselves, kind of doing the same algorithm. This is what kind of tempted me at first because I think it was a few months ago, we solved a problem that was pretty similar. I think it was related to chemistry or something like that. I could be wrong, but this pattern came up where you remove this and then you're left with a new substring. But thinking of this, if you remove in place anyway, that's gonna be a linear time operation and we could remove up to like n divided by two substrings because in the worst case, we remove every single character. So that would be roughly an n squared solution. Now, the idea to do better is actually not super complicated. So rather than just starting from the entire string, checking if that exists, like those substrings exist, we can actually scan through this from left to right. I'll show you what I mean. If the whole idea is that we might get to a substring, remove it, and then form a new substring where the new substring would have to include the previous character that we looked at and only the previous one. It's not like we formed a new string all the way back here if we remove from over here. And it would also include the character that comes directly after the removal. If there are any occurrences that we can remove from back there, by the time we get to this point, we can expect that they've already been removed. So knowing all of this, a very natural way to solve this problem is to just kind of keep track of the more recent characters, and that's typically done with a stack. And the reason we'll do a stack and like actually need a data structure rather than only looking at the previous character is because what if we had something that looked like this? And the reason I know this off the top of my head is because again we solved a somewhat similar problem so if we have something like this by the time we get here we've removed nothing but eventually we'll see this a b we'll end up removing that now we can form another a b so we remove that one and then we kind of just keep going the way that we do this is by having a pointer to the current character so by the time we get here this is the current character b we'll look at the previous character see that they form a string and then we'll pop both of these from the stack. And then our current pointer will be here. This is the top of the stack now. We'll compare this with what's on the stack. So these two form that string, so we'd remove both of them. We could either remove this from the stack or we could just not add it to the stack. You can code it up however you prefer. It's not a big deal. And then here we'd kind of see the exact same pattern, B and A. So we remove both of them and then we get here. 
remove both of them. And then by the end of this example, our stack is now empty. We reached the end of the string. So what should we return? We removed every character. All the characters that weren't removed should be on the stack, but they were all removed. Therefore, the length of the resulting string is zero. Now, coming back to this example up here, it's a bit more interesting, but the idea is similar. You add this to the stack. The way I'm going to code it up, I'm going to add this to the stack as well. And then I'm going to check the top of the stack, the last two characters, they do form a string that we can remove, A, B. The only two possible strings are going to be A, B, and C, D. So that's pretty easy to check with just like an if statement. So knowing that, we remove these, we get to F, can't do anything. We get to C, can't do anything again. We get to A, can't do anything. C, can't do anything. We get to D, this is a string we can remove, so do that. We get to B. This is a string we can remove, so do that, and then there's nothing that comes after it, so there's not a possibility that we could have created a new string. Therefore, the length of the stack now is going to be 2, that's what we return. So this is a linear time algorithm and linear space because of the stack. So I'm going to create a stack, and we know that we are just going to return the length of it at the end, so I'm just going to put that there from the start. And now I'm going to go through every character in the input. Because the way we code this up, we're going to check if the two most recent characters form a string. Either that string is going to be A, B, or it's going to be C, D. So the length of the stack has to be at least two. The way I'm going to code this up, I'm going to say the length of the stack is at least two. So before I even get to this part, I'm just going to take the current character and append it to the stack. Now, if the length is at least two, then we want to check one more thing. I'm going to wrap this in parentheses because there's two possibilities here. Either the top two characters will be A, B. So I'm going to, in Python, use negative two to check that the second to last is A and that the previous character is B. So either this is the case. I'm just going to copy and paste this because the next part's going to be pretty similar. Or we have C, D. So if this is true, we're going to remove the two characters at the top of the stack. So stack pop and then stack pop. The reason I've combined all of these together is it's going to be the same whether we're removing A, B or removing C, D. Since they're both of the same length, this code is going to be the same either way. We could have put them separately, but it doesn't really improve anything. So I will leave this as is. And just to run it, you can see here that it does work and it's pretty efficient in terms of time. There is theoretically a way we could improve the memory and that's what I'll quickly talk about now. We don't necessarily need a stack. We could theoretically do everything in place. When I say in place, we're kind of going to use the memory as a stack, but not directly. It's kind of like the two pointer algorithm when you have to like partition an array in like quicksort, for example, if that's an algorithm that you're familiar with. This is kind of why like I think the basics can be really important and you can learn all of these on NeatCode.io if you're interested. We'll do a two pointer approach where one pointer will tell us where we're going to put the next character. And one pointer will tell us what character we are currently reading. So this pointer will be here. It's A. This pointer will be B. So now we have the string A, B, and we want to sort of remove it. We don't actually delete the characters from the string because that would be a linear time operation. So instead, what we do is we say that the next time we see a character, we're going to write it to this position. So we see F. We will write it here now. We sort of deleted these characters, but not literally. So now F is going to be over here. And now we will take our right pointer. And instead of it being here, it's going to be shifted here. So just to restart from the beginning, just to dry run through this, this is where I'm going to put the read pointer and this is where the right pointer is. So right now the right pointer is at the beginning. We're reading the character A. It's the first character. We can't really remove anything. So we will shift the read pointer here because we're going to read the next character, but we're also going to shift the right pointer. It's going to tell us that if we see another character, write it to this position. Don't overwrite the previous character. So now we see a B. We can write the B here, but we can look at this and the previous character. And we know that this is the previous character because it's one left to our current right pointer because it is possible that we're going to delete some characters and you'll see what's going to happen in that case. So since right now they are the same, we now want to sort of delete these and we want to write the next character to the beginning position. We want to overwrite this portion. For us to do that, 
all we do is take our right pointer, instead of incrementing it like we would normally, we're going to decrement it. It's now going to be over here. That's basically saying that these no longer exist. So basically the characters in our current string or our current stack is empty. There's nothing there yet. We took these two and we popped them sort of. And so now we're here. This is where the right pointer is. That's where we're going to put F now. And then we'll take our right pointer and then shift it by one. We'll do the same thing with the read pointer. It's going to be over here now. So it's a C. So put the C in this spot then take this pointer and shift it by one and take this pointer and shift it by one. It's an A. You know, this is obviously getting messy. So I'm going to redraw this at the bottom. So we'll have an F, C and an A so far and we'll keep going. Now we'll be at C. We'll add that C here. Once again, we haven't seen like a special string that we can remove yet. Once again, we'll be at D now and this is where our right pointer will be. That's where D will go. And now we see both of them form a string so we can actually take our right pointer and then decrement it by one. So now the right pointer will be over here because we essentially deleted these two characters. And lastly, we will go to B. This is gonna tell us that the character should go at the right pointer over here. So now we have a B and this is the string that we wanna remove. So we remove it by taking our right pointer and decrementing it again. So that tells us that this is where the next character would go if we were going to add one, but we never add one. Just to show you the indices, this is zero, this is one, this is two. This is where our right pointer left off. And so all of the characters to the left of it are what remain. So it's kind of like the stack solution, except we're doing it in place. So theoretically, it could be a constant space solution if we're allowed to overwrite the input. But in most languages, you can't because strings are immutable. Now you could convert the string into a list or an array of characters, but at that point you're using linear space anyway, so it doesn't really improve anything. So that's the general idea behind this most optimal solution, but you can't really implement it in most languages, so I'll leave this here. Check out neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.